Hi everyone, it's Aaron from Holcroft Nissan and today we are going to be going through a full in-depth handover of the Nissan Aria Advance that we've got just behind us in the showroom. Now this is a technical video, we're going to be going through how to pair phones, what connections we've got, what sort of technology is on the vehicle. It's not going to be a review. If you want to look at the review, we talk about range anxiety, we talk about how the car drives. You can just use the video just up here in the link to see all of that content. So moving on with the Aria, thank you if you've purchased one from us or if you're waiting for your car, it is always useful to use these videos so that when you get here, you are ready and you are good to go. So without further ado, we're going to go for a handover and this is the intelligent key. So as you'll see on the vehicle, on the key, You've got your lock, you've got your unlock, and you've also got the hold for your boots. Now, something interesting about this key, because it's the new generation of Nissan and Nissan Next strategy, it's the new design, but as we walk close to the car, you'll see, because the lights have just come on, this is due to the car actually noticing that the key is in range, and we can just get straight in, and away we go. Down the right-hand side of your seat, you've got the bar that moves forwards, up, or down, back, and then just behind there is another bar that can give us the tilt on the backrest. And just behind that, there is a lumbar support, which is also electronic. So to start the vehicle, we put our foot on the brake and then just hit the start button here. Then, as you can see, we get the beautiful sort of logo that comes on and the, the welcome entertainment. And then on here, we've got all of our drive shifts here. And then just underneath, we've got a wireless phone charger. Now, if you do have a case on your phone, sometimes you have to take that off, but when we get, get the phone out, you can lock it as long as your phone is thin enough. So just moving on to the dash here, you'll see that that phone has just lit up, so you can see that the phone is charging. In here, we've got cup holders, and this is they use haptic controls, so they do take a little bit of getting used to, but it is just a gentle tap to change either in normal sport or eco. And then you do have e-pedal just on the right of that button. Now what e-pedal does is it will slow the car down as you take your foot off the accelerator. In the Aria, it doesn't bring the car to a full stop, but you can use it to drive really slow in traffic. And if you gently press your foot right the way down, the auto hold is gonna kick in. Now the gear shift pattern, that is just down here. So up for reverse, and then you'll see that you get your cameras all the way around and a steering guide. D is for drive, and then you've also got braked mode. So braked mode and eco mode is probably the most convenient and the most economical. So that is going to regenerate the most energy into your battery and use the least amount of energy when you move forward. But if you do feel that that is a little bit slow, because let me tell you now, this is a quick car, you can put it in sport and turn the pedal off. When you go back into P, that essentially leaves the car standing. You don't need to use the handbrake. It is all automatic but if you did want to do it manually it's just down here moving on to here we've got the haptic controls just above so we've got left and right for a passenger and driver we can change the temperature on each side and then as you can hear it's not really a big tap that i'm doing it's just gently tapping with my finger on all of these controls we can change the fan speed we can turn on recirculate and it tells you exactly what's coming up just on the screen at the bottom now your heated seats and heated steering wheel they are in the infotainment system and they are just down here. You just want to touch on connecting your phone. So this huge display that runs across the front intertwines with each other. But on this side, we've obviously got your radio station. So you've got your digital radio. You can set that up just here. The volume is just on this button here and you can turn that on or off, as you can see. So to pair a phone, really, really easy. Just down here, press the phone icon and we want to add a device. So on your phone, you just click in here and then let's go to settings you'll be able to see our podcast that i'll listen to but is it scanning you'll see at the bottom you can see my car just press my car and then once it connects to the vehicle it'll ask you if this pin is dis displayed press pair and away you go now on some phones you are going to have to wait because it will ask you as you can see to allow access to my contacts and allow access to bluetooth settings so on there, you can then use your phone to set up for Bluetooth audio. So like myself, I, I like my podcasts. And as you can see, that will just load on here shortly. If I open Spotify, I can see it's all loading on my phone. And there you go. That's how it comes up. 
So to go back onto DAB, you just press this icon here, and you've also got FM and AM. Obviously, we're in the showroom, so we don't get great signal. So just to put that down there, and we're back on charge. To set up your different tracks, you can click on DAB list, choose whichever radio station you want to talk to. Uh, I, I must admit, I'm a fan of Magic Chilled myself, so we click on Magic Chilled. Then when that loads, we can go back and we can press and hold on here, and that will set number one. Other things that we've got in here, we've got the satellite navigation, so we can click on there, and then if we want to go somewhere, we just press search, type in a point of interest or a postcode, and that will take us to our destination. As you move across, you'll see that we've got Amazon Alexa, so you can connect your Amazon account and pair that. And then we also have a user profile, so we can change the user, we can add a user, and you can set up all the different things that you want. So you can set your intelligent key so it knows who's getting in the car and it sets up your profile straight away. So you can set up your favorite radio stations, etc. all those kind of things. Now we've got different apps, so we can use Nissan Connect services, we can have notification services, we've got the weather, we've got EV, so we can use check out our energy usage and it tells us the history. Obviously this car really hasn't been used a lot, but it tells us how many miles per kilowatt we're getting. We can set up a charging timer, so we can actually say here when we want to charge. So if at home you're on an energy plan where you can charge at different times, mainly during the morning, like early doors between, I think it's half past midnight and half past four, you can set the car to charge it only then, and that will give you the cheapest amount of electricity on your tariff. The one thing you are going to need when you set up your Nissan Connect is your chassis number. So in here, you go basically log on to your app on your phone or on your laptop, use the chassis number that you get on your logbook or it is just in the left-hand corner of the screen, uh, windscreen, sorry, and you can set that up. And then you can talk to your car, you can view all your information, you can set on your lights, you can set your heaters on, you can preheat your car, all those kind of things. Now. Just on here, you can change the brightness. Obviously, we're inside, so the car thinks that we need the lights on. But we can just tap on this little camera icon, and that brings on the cameras. So you can see we've got the front. We can press it again, and it will bring on our left-hand side. Now, you can't do that on the driver's side, because you should never park next to a curb with the driver's side of the vehicle. But you can see exactly where you are. You can see the front wheel turning, and that means we're not going to scuff those alloys, and you can actually see how close you are to the curb. If we press it again, you just get a big view of the front. So if you're driving up towards bollards or um, a parking space, I quite find it quite useful when you want to see where the white line is on the bottom. But that is a really useful tool. And we press it again, and it goes off. So moving on to the steering wheel. So the lights are automatic. You can do them manually, as you can see on here, and the vehicle does tell you exactly what setting you're on. Now this button, you, we used to, with Nissan's push away, but as you can see, that just turns on your main beams. If you press this button here, you get a little A sign in a light. Now what that is, is your adaptive beam. So effectively, if someone's driving towards you at night, the car is gonna automatically sense that and dip your main beams accordingly. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we can change between different sort of levels of what we want now, so we can go through the different settings on the vehicle. Now, one useful setting that people always ask about is the e-pedal. It's the first thing I do when I get in an EV now with, with a Nissan. I get in and I turn my e-pedal on. So you've got forwards and backwards. Now, I have to remember where it is. I'm pretty sure we're in vehicle settings. No, it's not in there, but we can in here change our alarm system so you can ask on exit. And just as we move forward, we've got the driver assistance. Now, steering effort, you can change this. So if you change between drive modes of standard and sport, the steering effort is going to change. I have to admit, I quite like the standard. So normally, I would get in and just set it to the standard settings. So even if I'm in the sport mode, that is going to be in terms of weight and lightness. When you go in sport, it does feel a little bit heavier. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the e-pedal. Now, mode memory, basically, if we turn that off, every time we get in the car, e-pedal will be off. But if you want it to be on every time you get in, you just press the mode memory in there. And as you can see here, we've got a shortcut menu, so we can go straight in to audio source, driver assistance, the personal display, or turn the emergency lane departure off. Now, we've done all the settings that we, we can today. Here we've got the um, Nissan sort of intelligent sort of mobility surround settings, so we can go around, we can check out the forward lane, blind spot lanes here. 
if we go across, we've got the radio. So as we say, we've got Magic Chilled, or we can change our podcasts. Here we have got the full satellite navigation. So you don't have to have it on the screen here. You can have it directly in your, in your eye line from just tipping down from the road. It's just down there. Now, one thing I didn't touch on just in here is your menu for your seats. So you can actually turn on your seats just from this menu, but just down here, you because your heated screen option isn't down here, it is just there if you want that on. All in all, we've got a load of technology. The end on lighting in here is just down on the doors. In the footwell, we've got plenty of space for our feet, but there is some key cupboards. So you've got your glove box just down here, and then here, there's another little button that we just tap in, and this has just got like a nice valve it storage. So if you want to hide any valuables or anything, just hide them in there, and it's not taking up any space. There is space just down here underneath this, this sort of pod, and that's got your USB-C and USB for charging your phones. One thing that Nissan always talked to us about is technology. Now, we did mention slightly just in here about the um, settings for the lane assist and the intelligent cruise control. So effectively, that is called ProPilot. Now, this is ProPilot 2.0. Now, what that does is you can see it will come up on the screen here. If we're going along, we can press set. And obviously, it's not available because we're not moving. But just down this right-hand side, we can change the distance between us and the car in front. Now, what the car will do, it will keep you in the lane. You do have to keep your hands on the steering wheel, so it will guide you throughout the lanes but it will also monitor the vehicle in front so if that slows down we're going to slow down now if we set this speed to 70 and the car in front goes above that because it's speeding this vehicle is going to get to 70 then it's going to remain there it's not going to go any faster but it's also a little bit more intelligent now so effectively if you're going into an average speed setting the traffic sign recognition will pick up that it's now 50 miles an hour and you just press down to set and the car will automatically bring the car down to 50 miles an hour and keep you from getting any of those pesky speeding fines. So just down to the right of your knee, you can actually press the automated tailgate and you'll hear it in a second and you'll see that that tailgate is just lifted up so we can operate that from in here or on the key or we can even operate it using the foot which we'll show you as we go to the back. Now just under those buttons, you have your voice command system, so you can press there and say, you know, call mom, call dad, call whoever, and you can also answer and end your calls just on this button here. To the right of the dash, if you want to turn your lights on so you can see them a bit brighter in the day, you've got your dash brightness, so you can see that little button there does all the buttons, all your haptic controls, and all your gear shift, and even on your door, door cards. Just up here, you've got the panoramic sunroof. So, this opens, so you've got two buttons. You've got one on the right, one on the left. The one on the right controls the blind, and as you'll see, that closes to halfway. So you have to press it twice, or you can press it all the way across, and it'll go all the way over. Then for the glass, that also opens, so that uses the left-hand side button. You just press that, and as you can see, the glass opens here, and the little fly catcher just props up at the front. Now, that, for, to have that, you need to have the sky okay but it is an actually really useful feature and i've got a young little boy he loves it because he can look up see the stars and it also helps him to go sleep at night when we're driving around so as we move around to the rear we've got the boot now you've seen that we can press the button inside you've got the button on the key or straight directly under you just flick and then you'll see that the boot opens okay now in here you've got your charging cables so you've got your type 2 just under there and then underneath you've got your three pin plug and these boards come out so they are reversible if you want to carry something a little bit more hard wearing saying you're going the tip that is just there and the rear seats they are 60 40 split so you can fold down that side or you can fold down this side underneath you've got your puncture repair kit just under there and then as you can see there is another battery but in honesty you're not going to need that to, well you're not going to need to understand how that works now just up here you have another button you can lock the tailgate but what you'll notice is there's a little bar and it runs down the side here so if little kids get their fingers stuck in as they always do it'll just sense that and it's not going to damage the children's fingers it also has it on the way up can you see so it's not going to do any damage well do as little damage as possible if it does hit a wall we'll just press that button and that will lock and go down automatically now we need to talk about charging the car. So at home, this is where people get confused. Now you don't need a lock or a button on here, it just pops open. So if you just have a look in here, you've got two types of chargers. This one at the top 
is your Type 2 charger. So this is the one they use when you get home, you just want to plug it in. If you're out and about and you want a slow charger, okay? You do get two different, you get a 22 kilowatt and a seven kilowatt. So if you don't opt for the 22 kilowatt, you're not going to be able to charge a, a sort of fast charger on Type 2 at 22 kilowatts per hour. The maximum it will do is the 7.4. Now just underneath, you've got the CSS port. So the CSS is a type two at the top and then there's two plugs at the bottom that just plug in and that is your rapid charger, okay? So once they're closed and once you're charged up, press that and you're all locked. So under the bonnet, we do need to check. So just under here, directly above the Nissan badge, there's a little clip that just leads to the side. We just lift that up. So down here is your hold, just plug that in. So just to go through some of the things that you're gonna need. So as you can see, there's no real engine oil to change. So it's not something that you've got to worry about or touch. Just all you're going to need here is the filler for your water, for your windscreen wipers. And that is just in there. Feel free to just pour it in, away you go. And that is a short hand, well short, it's quite an in-depth handover actually of the Nissan Aria. Now, um, one thing to mention, as we walk towards the car, it did lock. As you can see, as we walk away, once you get a little bit further away, you'll see that those mirrors fold in. That means the car is locked. You will have the status on your phone to know that, but as long as the key is with you, that's all you need to do. And that is a short handover of our Nissan Aria. Now, if you are looking or are in the market, please feel free to get in touch with any of our teams at either Hanley Crew or Northwich. And we hope that we've given you all the information that you need before you come and collect your car. We have an award-winning number of people that work in within our teams that provide excellent customer service. So if you do want to get in touch, just follow us on our social channels, give us a call at the dealership or Otherwise, just get in touch in any way that you feel is more comfortable for you. We cater for everybody who with different needs. If you need to just text via WhatsApp, that is absolutely fine. Just let us know and we'll be sure to get that done for you.